بعده تفرقا معصوما أسألك يا مولانا أن تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما أمين اللهم أمين um, On behalf of my brothers and sisters in the Muslim Unity Center I would like to welcome our dear Shaykh Abdul Karim Yahya and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and um, we thank him for visiting his brothers and sisters and giving us some of his precious time Jazakallah Kulla khayr wa barakallah specific insult of uh, madness, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pointed out the character of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So that is what we hope to discuss with you tonight. And that is honestly, again, um, the believer should have a program, and we have a really a divine program. We have a manhaj ilahi. We have a divine program and a prophetic um, manner that should govern our conduct and lead us regardless of the changing circumstances in which we find ourselves. So I happen to be talking about the character of the Prophet ﷺ tonight, but this isn't um, something that I've just worked on or thought about or I'm doing because of current events. It's something that we do um, on a regular basis and continually remind ourselves and the believers of the character of the Prophet ﷺ because um, he taught us that that's the aim of his message, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mabaraka alayhi wa alayhi. He said, inna ma bu'ithtu li utamnima makarum al akhlaq. I've only been sent to perfect noble character. So we shouldn't be people that are reactionary, but rather we should have a program, and we have a program. And um, that's what Allah revealed and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came and established in his sunnah. And we should maintain that and stay on that. So he, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mabaraka alayhi wa alayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described his character as azim, his character as magnificent, or his character as tremendous, his character as great, salawat alayhi wa salam hu alayhi. And how would his character not be great when his character itself was refined by the Qur'an? His character itself, or his adab itself, was taught to him by Allah. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam, Adabani Rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi. That my Lord taught me adab and he did so well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself refined our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam with the verses of the Quran. And he was the first aim of those verses. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam was the first aim of those verses and they came. Um, and they shaped him. He received them and was uh, shaped by them and through them reared the Ummah. And so connected was he to the Quran, the revelation that not only did revelation affect his character as we will all know and, and we'll discuss in a moment, Revelation even affected his appearance. And Bukhari and Muslim narrate, and this is on the authority of Anas bin Malik, and this was the last time that Sayyidina Anas saw the Prophet. And we know the Prophet became ill on a Wednesday in Safa. Um, and his illness lasted for a number of days. There's a difference of opinion about when exactly his time of passing on to the highest companion was. However, he, we know by consensus that he died on a Monday in Rabi'ul Awwal, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. So at dawn prayer in that, on that Monday in Rabi'ul Awwal, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was leading the companions in the prayer. And Sayyidina Anas said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood in the door to the apartment. And that's the door to Sayyidina Aisha's apartment. And he drew the satara. He drew that his door was very simple. It was just a curtain. Salawat alayhi salam alayhi. And he was the best of the creation. So he drew the curtain and he looked to them. And Allah's messenger, he said, was standing uh, looking to us. Yangur ilayna wa huwa qa'im. And Anas said, kana wajhuhu ka'annahu waraqatu mushaf that the face of Allah's Messenger, it was as though it was a page of the Qur'an. And he smiled. And they were so joyous, Anas said, by seeing Allah's Messenger, that he said, we were almost distracted from our prayer. That was their love for Allah's Messenger, where they were worried for it, he'd been sick for a number of days. He stood and he looked to them, and when he would be happy, his face would light up like it was a piece of the moon. So just as uh, the Qur'an or the Mus'haf, it is radiant and it's full of meaning and it's beautiful 
and it is illumined, that is how the face was of Allah's Messenger But then he indicated, Abu Bakr began to recede, and the Prophet indicated that they would stay, and he drew the curtain, and that was the last time Anas and many of the other companions saw him, and he was glad with them. So even the one who knew him and loved him would describe his physical attributes as being similar to the revelation. As for his character, as we said, his character was so shaped by the revelation that you would describe his character as the Quran itself. So there is a tabi'i, his name was Sa'ad bin Hisham. He came to visit the mother of the faithful, Sayyidatina Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, and he said, Ya Umm al-Mu'mineen, anbi'ini an akhlaqi Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O mother of the believers, inform me about the character of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the concern of the young man of the Tabi'un, that he had actually come to Medina to sell land that he had, to sell his possessions, and go uh, to the north and make jihad until he died. But um, he, while there, he asked about the winter of Allah's Messenger and Sayyidina Ibn Abbas sent him to Sayyidina Aisha to ask. Before asking that, he asked about the character of Allah's Messenger. That was a concern of the noble young man of the second generation. How was Allah's beloved and again, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't just de decide to talk about Allah's Messenger um, just because there's an event or because some uh, foolish person makes a movie or someone else makes a cartoon. This should be our concern just like it was a concern of the self. This should be the discussion in our home just like it was a discussion of the home of the self. A man would come home and ask his wife, or excuse me, his, his wife would ask me, would ask him, what did Allah's Messenger say? One of them might, uh, divide time with his brother. You work during this time and I'll listen to Allah's Messenger so I can tell you what was said so that they didn't miss anything. That was their concern. They were attached to Allah and attached to his Messenger and they knew that they would only learn from Allah by learning from the Messenger. So they were concerned about this and they would ask about him. So Sayyidatina Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Unless the taqra al Quran, you're asking me about uh, the foremost of the children of Adnan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of a Rahman. Don't you recite the Quran? Like, like, why are you asking me? It's right there. The revelation is right there. The Lord who shaped him through that revelation made him like that. If you recite the Quran, you'll know him. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka alayhi wa So the narrator said, of course, bella. So she said, fa'inna khuluqa nabi allahi kan al-Quran. His, she said, verily the character of God's prophet was the Qur'an. And he was so, and also that indicates, uh, as Suhrawardi mentioned, he was one of uh, the great Imams, considered to be the knowers of Allah. He said, in this is a, is a very obscure indication of something that she, through her adab, was shy to say. And the Prophet ﷺ told us, to, uh, to have ihsa, to encompass the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and to emulate those beautiful attributes like mercy, like karam, like uh, jew, like love, like um, rafa, rahma, and, and forgivingness and pardon and so forth. So as though she was saying, kana mutakhalliqan bi akhlaqillah, that he emulated the, 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 the character, the, um, the beautiful names, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but she said it in a more general way. So that is how his character was, salawat alayhi wa sallam hu alayhi. So he was a, care, a, a Quran walking on the surface of the earth, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barak alayhi wa alayhi. So how um, is the character of someone whose character is like the Quran? Um, we'll just take a, a, a one picture of his character, and this uh, example also demonstrates um, the way that his character was informed by the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 7 verse 199, Surah Al-A'raf verse 199, Khud al-Afwa bil urfi wa arid anil jahileen. Um, take Afu. And um, the exegists say that means that which easily comes of uh, the character of the companions as well as their wealth. So don't take the most precious of their wealth and be difficult on that. And also what easily comes of their character, be pardoning. Be magnanimous in uh, receiving their character and accepting their excuse and not being hard on them and not spying into their affairs. 
خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ And command that which is reputable. Command al ma'ruf And turn away from those who are ignorant. One of the narrations about when this verse was revealed is that it was revealed when the Prophet Wasallam stood over um, the, the martyred body of Sayyidina Hamza and he had not just been martyred but he had been mutilated uh, after the battle of Uhud and that was the most painful sight that the Prophet saw the martyred body of his beloved uncle Hamza and he said, if Allah gives me to uh, overcome them, I'll mutilate 70 of them in your place. So he said this out of anger. And anger is not a vice, provided it's guided by uh, the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and within the bounds. And it's actually a virtue in that case. And we call it courage in that case. So to defend Allah's limits, to defend those who are wrong, we shouldn't let anybody try to convince us that that's not good character, that's noble character with the condition that is guided by the revelation and reason. By a sharab wal aqal, and anger when guided by the law, by the sharab, by the sacred law, and the aqal by reason is called uh, shuja, it's called courage. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa was the most courageous of Allah's creatures. So he said he was going to uh, punish them for what they had done for Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu, which was Sayyidina Hamza. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again in one of the narrations, revealed this verse. In some of the narrations, the Prabhupada Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa alayhi wa asked Sayyidina Jibreel, what does this mean? And this is a lesson for us. If we wish to have prophetic character. If we wish to have Quranic character, we have to be people who study the Quran and the Sunnah. That means when we come to a juncture, we have to ask. We have to ask those who have knowledge of this revelation and knowledge of the Sunnah so that we can be informed and then act according to those. So he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself even asked. And he asked Sayyidina Jibril, and Sayyidina Jibril said, I don't know until I ask. And he ascended and descended and said, O oh Muhammad, Verily Allah orders you, Ya Muhammad, inna Allah ya'muruka, an tasila man qata'ak, wa tu'tiya man haramak, wa ta'afuwa amman dhalamak. He said, Allah commands you to, um, to give to those who withhold to you, to withhold from you, to maintain ties, excuse me, with those who sever ties from you, to give to those who withhold from you, and to pardon those who wrong you. And he pardoned sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his character in this manner was shaped by the revelation. Verse after verse of, of, of the Quran, any verse, of the Quran dealing with any praiseworthy quality or action, he was the initial aim of those. And then he took on um, that revelation and was shaped by it and through it shaped the Ummah and when he uh, became like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised him and said, فَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily, you are above a magnificent character. Also on the day of Uhud, we see from his character, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, he, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam, wa Alaihi, he was wounded on the day of Uhud. And in the books of Seer, they say, you know, he broke his tooth and his cheek was split and what have you. But you have to um, imagine, uh, and it's not a movie version. The movies, we think violence is really easy. You know, someone gets shot and they fall down, and later on we see them in another commercial or another television program, what have you. He was, uh, he was wearing chain mail, which is like links, you know, linked together that forms like a cloth, but out of chain. Uh, and he had a helmet on. And he was struck in the face by, um, by an arrow or a sword or a spear or what have you, and it, it broke his chain mail and drove it into his noble cheek, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And it was so driven in his, into his cheek that Abu Ubaidah extracted it with his teeth and he lost his teeth from extracting it. And his, his eye tooth, Ruba'iyya tooth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was also broken. His helmet was also smashed. And what smashes an iron helmet? You know, iron smashes an iron helmet. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And his face was bloody. So how was the character of the one whose character was the Quran? 
at this moment, in this intense battle, while wounded. al Ozai, may Allah have mercy upon him, says, when that happened, the Prophet ﷺ, he took something and started drying the blood from his face out of fear that if a drop of his blood وسلم, fell on the earth, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cause punishment to descend upon them. At this time, when the companions saw the wounds of the Prophet وسلم, they said, if you would only pray against them. And he said, Lam ubath la'ana. I was not sent as a curser. In wa rahma. I was sent as an inviter and as a mercy. Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. O oh Allah, guide my people, for verily they know not. So that is how he was, salawat alayhi wa salamuhu alayhi. And we see in this, and in virtually every event where he was confronted by this kind of conduct, this is the character we saw from him. And there's two things that we see from this. One, that he always, uh, his mission was the guidance of the people to whom he was sent. We see this when they, he was driven from Taif and he could have prayed uh, or had the angel of the mountains, excuse me, smack